Hello everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. If you're joining us, um, you are in for a treat. We're sitting down for a bit with Lauren Cohan, uh, who's making her grand return to the Walking Dead franchise with the season 10 finale this Sunday, October 4th. So we'll be talking all about that, diving into her career, her craft, um, really all the backstage nuts and bolts, as you know. Just give her a minute to join us here. And then we will go from there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thanks for comments, by the way. I was like, oh, no, why is this not connecting? <laughs> no worries. No worries. How's it going today? Good. How are you? Good, good. I'm Ben Lindsay from Backstage. Um, it's, it's great, great to, meet to meet you. Ben. You too. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Of course. I did just get a text from your publicist. Are you having a flat tire right now? I've never had a flat tire in my life. And, and I mean, maybe, but not for as long as I can remember. And uh, so that's what just happened. And I was, and she was like, should we reschedule? I was like, hell no. <laughs> so I'm in my car. Yeah, I would have yeah. been in a better setup, but I'm just waiting for somebody yeah, everyone, to help me. <laughs> everyone has their like Zoom background and Instagram background. Yours happens to be your car today. That's fine. Exactly. Here we've got, we've got the sky. We've got, you know, anything we could possibly want. Yeah. It's too bright. <laughs> well, yes. th th thanks for making the time despite the circumstances. Um, of course, of course. We are a big fan of yours here at Backstage and of the show. So excited for your return for this. Um, so you're returning for the season 10 finale, which at long last is coming to audiences on Sunday. Um, how did it you? How did this kind of return come come? to your go across the table to, for you how did it happen yeah um, exactly. yeah yeah we had talked about it for a while um we just didn't really know if i would be coming back for a big chunk or a little chunk or exactly when it was going to be and then um yeah and then so and i'm just thinking how funny that is now because then lo and behold we've all had these kind of uncertain everything so it was a warm-up <laughs> um yeah so basically came back had been talking to Angela about when oh looks like you might have uh, freezed here Lauren can you hear me okay see here. Lauren, you still there? All right, everyone looks like we lost Lauren for a moment. Let me take just a sec to get her back here. The, it's the way of the world with these digital interviews, right? Appreciate your patience here. Let's see. Give her one more second here. Thanks for your patience. Looks like Lauren is having some service issues with her flat tire of all things. So I'll give her one more second to rejoin this Instagram live and then we can get this interview underway. It's looking like she's not viewing right now. So I imagine that it's a service issue. Let's see. We'll give it another minute here. If it turns out due to the flat tire tire that we do indeed need to reschedule this, no worries. We will be connecting with Lauren before this October 4th Walking Dead finale. Um, but do appreciate everyone's patience here. Just give it another moment. See if she's 
gotten a moment to join us. Hmm. Here, I see her now. All right, Lauren, I'm going to ask that you join once more. Give it a shot here. I think we're back. Are we back at it? <laughs> we're back. <laughs> This is going to just be our adventure. Yeah, right. <laughs> you should leave now and then come back. <laughs> right. You can take the reins. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so I'm hearing you, but not being able to see you. Oh, um, no. Can you see me okay? Yeah, I can see you and hear you perfectly. You look great. You sound great. <laughs> All right. Well, people in the comments, folks who are watching along, is it, are you being able to see? Oh, wait, now I see Lauren. Okay. 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 No. <laughs> we'll do the best we can and we can do this again if this gets too screwy we'll do it again another day i promise okay. it'll be fantastic well you have other on your plate as well <laughs> so <laughs> just a little but it's okay <laughs> um well to, to start things off then i'd love to hear that this character is such a rich and awesome character a fan favorite for sure what's been the most gratifying part about playing her and now what's most exciting about getting to revisit her yeah i think the most gratifying thing um, I was just thinking how, you know, in life, you don't always get to express the fullness of your emotions. Like there's a lot you have to sort of temper. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are definitely lots of moments for Maggie and lots of moments for all kinds of characters where you still have to temper it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very lucky that she gets to sort of ex experience the full gamut of emotions, just be both built, both because of how the show is and because of how she is and everything that she's had the misfortune or the opportunity of going through um I just feel really really lucky because you know I obviously never knew jumping in that this would be the whole story that Maggie would have and right. and that this would be the whole life lifespan of the show and um just very very cool on a lot of levels um and wait what was the second part of your question well in terms of revisiting her what, what are you most yeah. yeah, yeah, most excited about that. I mean, we got, it's interesting because right at the beginning of the, not at the very beginning, but when I joined Walking Dead for season two, mm -hmm. we had a whole chunk of episodes. We had eight episodes, scripts given to us right at the beginning. So it was a pretty delicious um, thing for an actor to just have all that ahead of you and to sort of build the story out and have an idea of where you're going. And um, we haven't had that opportunity until now. And so we're going back to shoot these six episodes for sort of the, the B pot of season 10. Right. Um, and those episodes will be, we have all six of those scripts. So it's just been like an amazing time right now because the story already is going to these places where we satisfy a lot of stuff, but we also set up so many new questions for my character and just like what she's been doing, where she's been, why she's scarred, what's been sort of reinvigorated in her mission. Um, and, you know, it's just great because there's a, there's a lot of positivity and there's a lot of, um, you know, she's confronted this ingenuity and, and, and these, these bright spots out there in the world that sort of give the reason to keep going but there's also been some pretty gnarly things that have happened. So, you know, we're going to get to, to sort of unearth a little bit of that and then to portray a little bit of that. And it's just like, it's, it's so cool. I am constantly surprised. And after all these years to be like, you know, that surprised and invigorated again is mm -hmm. really, I just, I'm just, you know, I, I feel like really lucky that this is my, uh, these are our writers and, you know, my little work family. It's just, yeah. you get it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the reason that people have stuck with The Walking Dead for 10 going on 11 seasons, I feel like, is because you do have characters like Maggie. It's so character driven. You fall in love with the people on the screen um, and therefore the actors portraying them. But uh, yeah. <laughs> the rest of your resume, I was really struck with, I mean, your, your big break was kind of on Supernatural, at least on the small screen. Mm -hmm. You did the Vampire Diaries. You've done The Walking Dead. These are like very heightened, fantastical reality. 
Um, is there something about that genre that especially kind of uh, strikes your interest as a performer? What keeps you coming back? Yeah. To it's so funny. I don't know why it's ended up like that because I like every, I mean, I don't mean to sound greedy, but I really just do like every genre. I like, um, you know, Gilmore Girls and Friends to like the man in High Castle or just like really qu the Goth Marenghi's Dark Place to just like the quirkiest, weirdest, quietest, most un- popular type of things and then I love just you know sci-fi shows and yeah so I just feel like who knows <laughs> but I will say it's just like you know I think that with all those characters and with genre it's obviously really fun um and it's fun for me now to to look to do more um just sort of darker less um I don't know, less less commercial things, but I felt like in the beginning, it was just so lucky. In the beginning, all the time. I mean, that, that was kind of the sweet spot with Walking Dead was that it was something that was hugely popular, but that was still very niche. And mm -hmm. that does not happen very often. And so I just felt like, um, I don't remember where I was going with that. Cause then I just, I get these, sometimes I get this like little flashing Rolodex of moments in, in, in the career and then I just go on. Yeah, tangent. yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, especially with like an acting career, I feel like it is just kind of fly by the seat of your pants sometimes. You can't, yeah, like, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't go in expecting or set, setting a trajectory of these sci fi projects, they just happened. No. To be what it is, yeah. I wanted to be a, I loved drama when I was at school, but I never got like leading roles or, or anything like that. I was always just kind of like singing and being goofy in the chorus. And when I first went into this whole general arena, I wanted to actually just be on Blue Pita, which is like a kid's TV show and present to kids and act things out. And just, that was my main thing. And I just wanted to have fun. Like I just knew like trying to do things that would be engaging and that would be different from myself and my life and everything. And then, um, and then when I was in college, I started doing plays like seriously. Okay. And then that kind of opened up all the different colors of just exploring character. And, and then you just realize as everybody, anybody watching this, who's uh, interested in, in acting and performing, it's just like, you start like, it's like from the inside out, this light just kind of expands in you of the places you can go, like yeah. the, the things, the, the things you can connect to and the emotions and all this stuff. And it's free and it's not, your life but it's totally your life and it's just the mm -hmm. coolest thing it's like yeah. limitless yeah. yeah exactly i mean that that's the yeah. exact thing that we here at backstage get to the nuts and bolts of i mean we're, we're all actors and creators um i'm we of course have a lot of your fans here as well um but to wrap things up here i know that you have a flat tire to tend to <laughs> walk you through our backstage questionnaire which kind of is a walk down memory lane is kind of that actor's perspective um, hmm. For starters, how is it that you first got your SAG after card? Um, I did an under five on the bold and the beautiful was how I got my SAG card. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. so, I played Forrester employee two. Okay. I mean, yeah, the soaps are a great, great stepping stone to, to all the other things that you've done. Certainly a great training ground. Great training ground. I was like, I had done other things in the UK, but then my managers were like, all right, we're doing this. And I was like, cool, whatever we got to do so I can, you know, open up the playing yeah. field. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, how do you typically prepare for an audition? I've been through so many different techniques and I guess like everybody, you just sort of have an amalgamation of, of things, but I'd say consistently, um, I like to take a script and only go one line at a time and create an entire universe with limited information. And then I add a bit more information. Um, but what I really like to do is take, and this is every character's lines, especially it's helpful when you have a whole script, but even if you just have sides, this is great. Um, so you just take a line and you go through every possible iteration, how another character could respond, what you might do, what you might say, and then go on to the next thing. And that information will either prove or disprove your, your theories. Um, 
and it's slow and it's painstaking, but it gets better because it really exercises the peripheral parts of your creative brain. And yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's been, you know, sometimes I don't have the patience and I have to just like sit down, do the work. That's the biggest part of it as an actor. It's like you do it whether you want to or not and then it's there when you need it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the part where you're just like, this isn't just learning your lines. This is living your lines, living your life, living the whole thing. So, yeah. <laughs> that approach taking it line by line because even if the person you're acting across from or the reader in the audition even if you haven't mapped out that you're still it keeps you limber to the possibilities in the moment um that's yeah a practice i like that it's fun yeah diana castle i did her acting class um still do sometimes in oh, la it's a really good really beautiful there we go in class mm -hmm. well of course you found success in the audition room but not everything is a, is a home run. Do you have an audition horror story that you could share with us? Every single one. <laughs> Aside from the ones you book, every single one is a horror story. Yeah. It's like, it's so hard to believe when you think, oh, this person's successful, blah, blah, blah. No, they're always horrible. You still sweat. You go in there thinking they can tell. I just like my t-shirt, my smell. Oh my God, this is crazy. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. And it's that over and over and over, even when you have made it, mm -hmm. um, Unless, I will say, unless you have spent such a good amount of time prepping and then no experience is bad because you know that you had an opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. You don't think about it as an audition anymore. You go in the room and you think, I'm engaging and bouncing these idea around and this is just an opportunity. Um, and then you can really just think because the more that we can think of ourselves as consistently in the creative state an audition is just another place that you are while being a creative person so yeah. that might sound obvious but it's just like it it always helps me to remind myself of stuff like that because the horror story audition the first one one of the first ones i did was horror story it was like i had to i had to use two different accents um I still had much more of an English accent because I had just really moved over from the UK and I had to play an American who jumped into Scottish and then jumped into something else. And I just, just died in the middle. I was like, I just, I just, I don't. And I think they said, it's okay, you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a good try. <laughs> yeah, don't, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You've had a long day. Put you down easy, put you down easy. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Um, it was a good two, two more quick ones for you. Um, what screen performance should every actor see and why? Is there any oh, God. formative for you when you were younger? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if this was when I was younger. And there are so many that go into my... The two the two performances in my mind, as always my favorite, neither of them are female, which is terrible because there's a million female ones that I like too. But the one that always comes to the front of my mind is Steve Martin in The Jerk because um, my associations are just... I can watch the movie a million times. It just makes me so happy. And then criminally it's only in the last two was it two years ago or so i saw on the waterfront oh. and i had never seen it before and i feel like i had seen scenes from it or clips from it or talked from it it was just always at the top of my list like what are you doing girl watch this film and i finally watched it and i just every everything about this job that is perfect um was so full focus mm -hmm. and so if anybody hasn't seen it and it actually it is even Marie Sate and Marlon Brando both performances are absolutely stunning so I shouldn't I just know that um a truly female-led performance there is one in my mind just come back to me next month no problem no problem okay I mean, okay yeah th those are two really solid ones I mean you got Marlon and Steve where can you go wrong I mean what can you do yeah yeah, yeah. um Final question again, a lot of our audience today are kind of the early career actors and creators of the world. If you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? If you really want to do it, nobody can stop you. Mm. Yeah, and you don't know that. You're not even thinking about whether or not you can do it when you're younger, luckily, because you're, you're just plowing on and you don't know enough failure to be afraid, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> having said that it really yeah the best thing is just to just the amount of stories that you hear of people who were told no and then they go on to be great successes or mm -hmm. they don't but 
it's up to you if you want to keep going and yeah. do what makes you happy. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Well, we're lucky to see you out there doing what makes you happy. Um, yeah. To see you back on the back on the screen as Maggie in The Walking Dead. Um, again, everyone tuning in, you know this already, but the season 10 finale is coming up this Sunday. So I'll keep an eye out for that. And Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. Tech issues aside, this was great to uh, pick your brain. I know. Yeah. It was so nice to chat to you. I'm glad. Yeah. I co totally forgot about everything, actually. So thanks. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. okay. And we'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. Thanks. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.